Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zia Scaraval from ZK Research, and I'm uh, here in uh, Santa Clara at uh, HPE's West Coast headquarters. This is actually the home of Rubin Networking, which is, of course, an HPE company. Um, with uh, Larry Lanetta, you are a VP of uh, a whole bunch of different products, right? <laughs> yeah, for the networking business, <laughs> yeah. that's correct. Yeah, so uh, just a quick buy on yourself, the products that fall up in, under you. Yeah, so thanks. Uh, See, so it's just to be geographically precise. Yeah. We're in San Jose, okay. not Santa Clara, yeah. but um, we're actually, as we've talked about, in the midst of really networking central yeah. across the industry, right? All the different major players are here, and uh, we continue to drive innovation across the networking business. My responsibility and my team is to take products to market out of the entire portfolio, so it's all the connectivity products, yeah. access points, switches, WAN, et cetera. Uh, HPE Aruba Networking Central, was, as you know, is the uh, cloud native network management solution that we offer, um, which includes AI and security. And we're going to get into that you know, as we yeah. talk about the various parts of the portfolio. I've been with uh, HP Aruba Networking for almost eight years now. Yeah, what's interesting about this area, too, is uh, uh, all your major competitors are here. Right. And uh, it, you know, one of the, as an industry watcher, one of the things that's been said about networking for, oh, the better part of my time as an industry watcher is that the network's being commoditized, right? Right, and that's that's certainly not true. In fact, the network networking is going through a pretty major tailwind right now from a modernization standpoint. In fact, in a recent survey that I did with the Cube Research, one of the interesting data points was we asked the respondents, "Is the network more important, to, or how important is the network to your business compared to two years ago?" And over ninety percent said it's significantly more important, or more important, and that just shows that. Uh, despite the relative maturity of this industry, there's still tremendous room for innovation to help businesses meet their business outcomes. Yeah, that's exactly right. And you know, the, the idea and the reason we were at Black Hat as a security vendor is the network is not just about connectivity anymore. It's about user experiences and specifically as it relates to Black Hat, it's about building up the security ecosystem you know, on behalf of the security team. Uh, so yeah, the innovation uh, is off the charts now, and you know we're going to talk about AI sooner or later, right? AI is driving a tremendous amount of that because when you t think about how data gets acquired, how it gets moved around for training and inferencing, the network is absolutely essential for that. Yeah, and I did want to uh, bring up Black Hat because the last time I met you was at Black Hat, and. Um uh, I guess I wasn't surprised that you were there, but I'm always surprised when you see networking, historical networking vendors there. Now, one of the interesting aspects of Aruba is ever since the company was founded, I always thought of Aruba more as a security company dressed up as a network vendor, yeah. right? primarily as a Wi-Fi vendor at first, because you always had a lot of good security capabilities in the products. And um, so just can you give me a, uh, us a little bit of history on Aruba and security and how the companies thought about the two? Yeah, I think you have that absolutely right from the get-go, and this is over 20 years now, uh, Aruba recognized that security uh, was in, uh, crucial to enable the adoption of things like wireless networking. No longer, you know, and, and we introduced something called the Policy Enforcement Firewall, which is an application layer firewall which runs on our access points, right? And we've had that for almost 20 years now. So that's why people, a lot, of, and you're not the only one to make that observation yeah. that, you know, we're really a security company cloaked in, in networking, uh, you know, environment. But, um, I, you know, I think it's what's happening now, um, and we're going to get back to what we did at Black Hat, um, is that AI has taken the opportunity to use the network to protect the organization. And that's what we were showcasing at Black Hat. We introduced two new uh, solutions. One which um, really trades on the fact that we believe we have the largest integrated networking data lake in the industry. And because we have that, we can start building solutions on top of that. Um, and what we announced at Black Hat was um, network detection and response. And you say, well, that's been around for a while, yeah. right? Well, what's different is everybody else needs to put a box or an agent or both into the network to get some amount of telemetry. We natively get way more telemetry right out of our infrastructure to drive the NDR. And by the way, it's part of our foundation license, so it doesn't cost anything more for the customer. And it delivers much more precision, much more accuracy. And we use it not only to detect issues, 
but we also make recommendations on how to remediate. That's the detection and response capability. So it's super exciting. It continues to extend our security portfolio. And then the other solution that we introduced is what we call uh, ZTNA Local Edge. So we now have a portfolio of SSE solutions, uh, Secure Services Edge solutions, ZTNA, soft, uh, SWIG, CASB, et cetera. Yeah. What we're showcasing and what we showcased at Black Hat is the idea of universal ZTNA. And if you think about what we saw at the show, uh, universal ZTNA was one of those themes that sort of sprung up, right? And the idea is that for everything that's on the network, whether it's a workload, an IoT device, or a user, each of those elements gets a policy, one policy defined one time, and then enforced universally across the network. So we're not quite there yet. We have all the pieces, uh, but we made a major step forward with the ZTNA local edge because now the same policy that you define for the cloud from an access standpoint now can be enforced on the campus without any change at all. So you covered a lot of stuff there. Now, uh, a couple of the things you said um, are interesting in that uh, NDR is not new, right? And uh, you're, you're thinking of uh, security as a network function and this coming together of networking and security has been something, uh, I mean, gosh, the industry has been talking about for the better part of 20 years, very slow to get to this point, but it seems like in the last few years, every security vendor is now a network event company and every network vendor is a security company. Most companies are either big S, little N, or big, you know, uh, or uh, big N, little S. And I think Aruba, it's fair to say you're probably big N, big S, right? You come at it from a network, but you've had security a long time. But what's what, what's, been, what's happened in the industry that's really driving this interest to bring in network and security today versus the last 20 years where we talked about it, but it didn't really happen? Well, I, I think it's two things. One is uh, people understand that these solutions fit together, right? They're, they're not siloed. You don't do networking and security in two different places. It all has to come together. There's a lot of senior ma management appetite when we talk to CISOs and director of IT. Uh, they want that to happen. And, and, and ZS, I think the other key trend that you're hearing about the industry is, I have too many security vendors. You know, I, I have to reduce my security vendor footprint. So what better way to do that than to look for the infrastructure vendors that you now have to fill that gap so that you don't have to keep bolting in solutions to co cover uh, you know, your open spots and be better protected. Yeah, now, and what are your customers telling you there around the consolidation? It, clearly, no one's going to go to one. Correct. Right. right. Um, and so what are they looking to consolidate down to the network versus keeping as a standalone security key? Well, anything that, you know, winds up dealing with traffic, right, is a, is a candidate. Now, again, there's going to be, you're right, no one's going to do it all. But we keep consolidating things like NDR, IDS, IPS, you know, web filtering, firewalling. All of it's starting to come into the network. And as a result, there are fewer things that, Customers have to, as I said, bolt on. Great example, you know, our uh, CX10K switch, which we use top of rack, has embedded fire, east-west firewalling in it. So our customers are buying that switch and not have to buy the separate firewall to go along with it. So, you know, that happens across the board. It is going to take time, but the pace is accelerating. Yeah. Now, there are... Uh uh, ZTNA is certainly, again, something that's been talked about for the last few years. Lots of, in fact, every vendor's got a zero trust solution, whether they really do zero trust or not. Uh, now, one of the unique differentiators for you is local edge. And so can you talk about that and what that brings? Yeah, so, you know, there's a difference between zero trust and zero trust network access, right? Yeah. ZTNA is sort of a term that, you know, covers the idea of a cloud-based access control solution, policy, you know, um, monitoring, oversight, et cetera. Um, and that comes as part of an SSE solution, as I talked about. So um, what's exciting here is this, as I said, journey to the universal ZTNA uh, framework. And the idea that we're really now the only ones where you get to find the policy in the cloud and enforce it in the campus. So instead of hairpinning traffic yeah. out to the cloud every time you want to do access control, it flows naturally. Better user experience better control, and better security. And it would seem that uh, with the rise in IoT, all the hybrid workers that you have today, and I, I do think we're moving into an era too where you'll see more 
mobile things, autonomous vehicles, things like that. Right. You, know, you can argue that they're IoT, but uh, you know, OT convergence as sure. well. Um, the ability to be able to do that from a central location becomes um, not really a nice to have, but I'm, I'm not sure you can run it any other way that, in a way that's scalable. How, yeah. how do you reconcile policies that get done in two different places? Yeah. And how do you make sure that the enforcement is, is consistent? So you have to get to that model. Again, it's a journey. We're not all the way yeah. there yet, but we feel very confident we have the elements to do that. Yeah, the other, one of the other interesting data points from the, the survey that I had mentioned was that, so while 90% of plus percent of people said uh, the network's more important, over 80% said it's also more complex. Yep. And I think that, that addresses uh, the points you just made where we gotta find a way to make this simpler. Right. I mean, we can't just keep bolting things on, having complexity go up because those, to me, those two data points of more important and more complex are, right. are you know, they're, they're going in opposite directions. Yeah, and that's where AI comes in. Yeah, right. It's a, yeah, and so talk about the role of AI. How are you guys are thinking about AI uh, to, to to simplify things? It, it starts with you know data, right? I mentioned that, yeah. and, and that's where your your data lake becomes. Important. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we're seeing an interesting phenomenon. Yeah, you know, we're sitting in like the place in Silicon Valley where networking gets done. So if you think about you know Robert Metcalf and his law of the more people use the network. It, the value goes up exponentially. Yeah. We're seeing the same thing with data and AI. The bigger your data lake, the more diverse, the more relevant, the better solutions you can build, whether it's for networking, security, uh, experience management, whatever, more people will use your product. And let me give you an example. We announced um, an LLM capability, search capability in March. We've added 25% more devices, more network devices in the last six months and well over that in terms of endpoint devices, in terms of how much we're now managing. People are coming to the platform, coming to the solution because of the AI-based simplicity and management that we're offering. So it, it's just gonna continue to spin up. It, you know, again, it's very similar to the network effect. This is the AI data effect. And, and what are customers telling you they want AI to do for them? Ultimately, the goal is automation. But we're not there yet. Just look what happened over yeah. the last several months. And in fact, that was another theme we saw at Black Hat. AI is, you know, important, but I need to be in the driver's seat. Yeah. I need so what we did with NDR is we actually built in <clears throat> the administrator's role along the way so they could make decisions about what they saw, how they wanted to respond to it. But ultimately, it's automation that people are after. Yeah, that'll be uh, fascinating to see uh, how that rolls out. To me, the analogy is it's a little bit like the journey to a fully autonomous vehicle, where today, not many people trust full autopilot, but there's lots of AI built into cars, lane change alert, parallel, parallel park assist, tasks that are hard, or maybe you know very important, exactly. that, that I can now use AI to help me <clears> with. And so, um, when, if you think of that analogy, what would be the low-hanging fruit today for AI? What, what should people be doing with it today on their journey towards full automation? Well, what we use it for, and we're going to be making some announcements in September around this, is we have now intent-based uh, user, uh, user interface and, U and, and user experiences for the operator. So we can sense what, what they're trying to accomplish, what they're looking for, and present the right information to them at the right time. So this is, again, making them more efficient, not having to search around for the different data. I, I think the other thing is around configuration. We now do, for example, firmware configuration recommendations based on what we see across our data lake in terms of what works and what doesn't mm -hmm. for a specific configuration, for the customer's configuration. So if they're wondering, you know, should I make this change or not? You know, we can with a lot of confidence say, yeah, we've seen a lot of people make that change that look exactly like you. Go ahead and make it. So th these are the kinds of things that, you know, I think are, like I said, the low hanging fruit. Um, and, you know, a lot of this is just simply seeing what they can't see, the administrator can't see, and alerting them when they need to do something. All right, Larry, just a couple more questions. Uh, as you look ahead, and since you're in charge of product, what are some of the other technologies that really excite you that are coming? Well, I think Gen AI, no doubt, is gonna have a profound impact on a lot of the things we just talked about, yeah. right? Um, and, you know, for us, you know, it's also this idea that um, we're part of a bigger, Portfolio. We're part of Hewlett Packard Enterprise, yeah. right? And one of the things we showed at the uh, uh, at the booth 
was not just the networking-based security solutions. We also showed some storage-based security solutions. We have Zerto, which is a really fine cloud-based backup and recovery um, you know, cyber resilience platform. Yeah. Um, That's another topic that's become big over the last couple, well, yeah. since CrowdStrike, right? So, <laughs> right. Yeah. And, can, and, I, can I recover? And you know, we showed uh, what we call Silicon Root of Trust in our servers to make sure that the servers are not tampered with. And that came all under the heading of security for AI. So, you know, a lot of people were now, it used to be how many GPUs can I get and how fast can I train a model? Now people are coming to us saying, I need to make sure I can secure my AI infrastructure from end to end. So having a, a broader portfolio of those kinds of solutions is really powerful for our customers. All right, so, um, you know, last question, just some advice uh, for engineers out there today. They're, if I'm a network engineer, my job's gotten way more complicated. I've got to worry about security. I've got to worry about hybrid workers, AI. Um, what is, how should they think about infrastructure modernization? What are the, uh, for someone watching this, what are some near-term objectives they should be thinking about? You know, learn what AI means and how it, it's used. Look for best practices across the board. Yeah. And, and, and part of the reason is, you know, speaking as a vendor, right, um, there are, you, you mentioned there's a lot of claims, right? People call AI things AI that aren't AI. You know, get to know what's under the covers. Ask the tougher questions so yeah. you know what a vendor or solutions is or isn't offering you and being smart about you know, how you can use it. I mean, you know, this is now, I think, we've said it, a lot of other people have said it, you're not going to lose your job to AI. You're going to lose your job to someone who yeah. knows how to use AI to be more efficient and more effective. The other thing I would say is there's never enough security yeah. analysts. There's never enough network analysts. So just continue to, to learn and, and lean into what's coming. Yeah, I think that's, uh, we talk about infrastructure modernization, but what you're talking about is skill set modernization. And I think uh, too often engineers get very comfortable. In fact, I've seen this movie play out before. You think of you know, token ring to ethernet, yep. you think of uh, TDM to VoIP. Uh, there's a lot of cases in the past, uh, even with server virtualization, where the, the, the engineer didn't want to evolve with the technology and wound up being left behind, and so don't be left behind. That's, uh, I think, a good conclusion, but uh, also have a partner who yeah. can help you on that journey. Yeah, I, and that's certainly an important aspect of that, too. So, Well, thanks, Theus. It's always great to see you. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, all right, Larry. So on behalf of Larry Lunetta from HPE, uh, Aruba Networking, I'm Zia Scaravalli from ZK Research saying thanks for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time in the next episode of ZCast.